Uh, welcome to LLMs from Dream to Deploy. Uh, my name is Josh Goldstein. I am a senior solutions architect at Selden. Um, Selden is based in uh, Shoreditch in the UK. Uh, and I will be walking you through uh, how you can deploy uh, LLMs uh, in an efficient manner with uh, using the Selden LLM module. So at Selden, we're building the global infrastructure uh, for ML operations. So helping companies get to production faster in a reduced risk manner in, in order to um, deploy those models, but also manage and govern them to stay within compliance, not only within policies for your in organization, but also for government regulations as they're all coming down today. Where does Selden fit in? Selden fits into that second side of the ML ops lifecycle in that model deployment. So once your model is done, it's been packaged up and put into storage, you are good to go in order to deploy that model with Selden. Selden's global impact, uh, we've deployed, we have 8,500 stars on GitHub, we uh, have over 10 million models deployed throughout the world. Um, and through working with our customers, we've been able to identify about up to an 85% efficiency in going into production uh, with customers, taking uh, going from months to, to weeks, weeks to days, and then days down to minutes, uh, all through their MLOps journey um, and using Selden. So, I'm going to go over a tiny bit about what Selden is, and then we're going to dive into the LLM module. So Selden Core V2 is um, given, uh, built on um, the notion of data-centric uh, AI. I know right before the whole Gen AI uh, fad came out and the big craze, um, data-centric AI was uh, a big thing in the MLOps world and in the AI world in order to start building not, models are not only, use cases are not only just a single model today. There are multiple models. It takes two or three models. You need to potentially conditionally go down routes based on the outputs of the previous model. Uh, it would go down separate routes. So we built Core V2, which has a bunch of components that allow you to build these types of use cases, bring your own custom dependencies to the table, as well as experiment with those models in, in real time um, either as a shadow or a canary as well. One of the other key things about Selden is that we are agnostic to the training platform. So having the ability to use DataRobot, H2O, AI, MLflow, uh, SageMaker, any, any type of training technology is all adequate when you're building models with Selden, when you want to deploy these models with Selden. Um, we have technology uh, called ML Server that enables even some of the non, non uh, out of the box runtimes that we provide. So these are those prepackaged runtimes, um, including uh, this one is the traditional model slide um, around. So with Selden, yeah. Hey, sorry. Uh, so we're not able to see your slides uh, if you are sharing them. Oh wow. Sorry, let me. Yes, we can see them. Thank you. Ah, perfect. perfect. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Ah, okay. So I'll back up to this slide. Um, so, like I was saying uh, before, but now you can see it. Selden Core V2, um, having the ability with that data centric um mindset having that mindset of that data centric uh ai applications of your use cases we've enabled as you can see these various components that allow you to experiment within your use cases chain models together apply custom business logic within these chains bring your own custom resources to the table because as we know not everyone uses the same version of scikit learn within an organization um, as well as having the ability to attach those drift detectors, outliers, and explainers, which Selden also provides through its Selden Alibi library. Going through that flexibility, so anything on the training side, 
that you want to use to build your models. You're more than allowed to do that. And with Selden and its ability to not only use out of the box runtimes like a scikit-learn or an XGBoost, but also should you need to bring another type of runtime to the table, you have that ability with Selden to create it even in a reusable fashion um, to use to deploy two, three, 20, 30 different models. So from the traditional model standpoint, where we're back to <laughs> apologies again, um, these are the prepackaged runtimes that come out of the box. What does that mean? That means these are just configurations pointing to the storage buckets where those models live. And then you have the, and then the models are live within your Kubernetes clusters. One of the key notes to note here is that Python wrapper, as well as those Alibi detect and Alibi explain, what those enable is a lot of that custom logic, that reusability um, mechanisms in order to do things like call out to a vector database for a RAG application, um, for example. On the second side, we have NVIDIA Triton also as an inference server that supports a lot of those deep learning needs for all of those GPU accesses to access um, as well. Quick overview of the model definition. So a simple model definition, it's a two-pronged two approach. Step one is deploy the model. Step two is deploy the pipeline. So what you're seeing here is that simple model definition for an out-of-the-box prepackaged runtime. As you can see, all I'm doing is setting my URI, my name, the annotations uh, for our enterprise product, um, memory, and then here, uh, one of the most important parts, the requirements and saying that this model is an XGBoost model. Like I said uh, previously about the pipelines, they are naturally asynchronous. You can go down conditional routes as well. Um, so what you're seeing here is one of the value adds of pipelines that allows you to put explainers, outliers, drift detectors and run them in parallel against the output. And then you can see within these pipeline examples, you have another configuration that you can apply for and set a sequential set of steps. You have a lot of flexibility here. We'll see that in the uh, some of the LLM pipeline examples. Um, and one of the cool things about pipelines is you can reuse models under the covers. So I can deploy this model first, and then I can use it in two or three different pipelines and use cases, should I so please. The other one is flexible experiments, being able to go down that 50-50 split, 50-50 split, or that even doing those mirrors under the covers, you can use as many models as you want within each, each of them. As long as they add up to 100, you have the ability to do header routing as well, sticky sessions, um, as well as you can do this at the model level, but you can also do this at the pipeline level. So if you have two long pipelines and you need to deploy and update the entire pipeline, you can run an experiment on that as well. And here's an exam example of how you can run with that explanation, with that explanation pipeline. And finally, we have the customizable servers and the server configs. This is how you bring those custom dependencies to the table. You can use these as templates if you need to add certain things into the pods in Kubernetes, like certain metrics or infrastructure uh, policy type things that are installed in everything that you install into Kubernetes. You have the flexibility of doing that as well here because of these server and server configs. Now, onto that traditional and generative models. Um, what you're seeing is that predictive that pipeline we just saw previously. Uh, as you can see, there is no outlier. But however, these pipelines are, are extremely flexible that allow us to then, I can take, run these three models in parallel, which are traditional, come down and put it in an LLM summarizer. Now, if we take a look over here with the pipeline features, you have that ability to map these tensors. This mapping is enabling a prompt template under the covers and applying each of these values to that prompt as you would do with a system with a uh, almost like in a link chain manner as well. So 
LLM use cases, conversational support, internal knowledge box. I'm sure the theme of the year last year was summarization, knowledge box, coding co-pilots, um, even, even the applications like Shopify asking for help building out their aspects, you know, in a coding co-pilot for Shopify, um, as well as training bots. Then we come into that content creation, the image, the music, uh, a lot of, a lot of enterprises are looking into, they have a lot of pain with doing synthetic data. So this has really helped them apply and get better quality synthetic data. Um, and then more, we have the speech to texts, the texts to speeches, um, a lot of help in drug discovery, uh, I mean, I've read uh, an article that Intel ran an experiment once around building a chip and it built it in about three or four days, um, as opposed to the engineers taking about six months or so. So challenges when deploying LLMs. First off, the deployment and serving. So with API-based LLMs, with the Grox and the open AIs of the world, you have that scale taken care of, but however, when you want to come time to taking a Llama 3, fine tuning it, deploying it on your own infrastructure, not letting that LLM leave your firewalls, that becomes a problem because then you have to start thinking of scale, GPU costs now, are there mult now I need to use distributed GPUs as well. Building applications uh, is another key challenge, you know, trying to use a lang chain or coding it yourself, um, but also at the same time, leveraging um, being able to have insight into that as well, being able to see the traceability and understanding of what's going on within that, within that flow of that pipeline. And then the ongoing management of it, um, having looking at the metrics, the performance, the CPU aspects uh, is, uh, I know explainability is still waiting for that paper, but when that comes out, um, as well as other key metrics that you need to keep track of. So for deployment and serving, these are complicated workflows. You have various different model sizes. You have requirements around latency, um, then making those decisions around uh, making those decisions around using those API based. Are you going to use the Azure service of OpenAI? Are you going to go use Grok? Are you going to go, or are you going to come and bring it in house? There's also a bunch around having large model deployment strategies. So data parallelization, um, being able to distribute the workload of those LLMs in various manners as well. So for Selden, you can deploy with our LLM module, which supports, we decided to use support of some of the most po of the popular technologies out in the market that help enable that distributed GPU in quantization activities as well. So OpenAI, which is the, which is OpenAI, ChatGPT, but it also supports the Azure service as well as most enterprises uh, are not, they're probably not going directly to OpenAI. And then focusing on the local, the ones you're gonna be host, you would be hosting and running yourselves, DeepSpeak VLLM and transformers so that you have the flexibility you bring in anything from hugging face uh, and then if you want to run certain ones on VLLM based on the use cases uh, I know that the various technologies have uh, different functionality to allow for quality control and quantization building applications so building applications with Selden goes back to that concept and why I spent a few minutes on the pipeline concept so having that pipeline concept and being able to have various control flows, if statements, for loops, running in parallel, we're able to build a common design, you build applications such as a chat, retrieval augmentation, as you saw, summarizer of sensor data that would allow that you have it converted into some sort of business text as opposed to just coming out in a mathematical statistical way where an executive might not understand that. Um, and then if you take note for the retrieval augmentation, um, we are working on uh, with looking at who the winners of the vector DB race is going to be. Um, but with our ML server in Selden, we have the full capabilities to tap in to whichever vector DB that you are able to that you that you would so please. 
So LLM applications with Selden, um, you have the Selden, you have your memory component, um, which is another component that is essential when you're building those chat applications. So not having to go out and build all the memory aspects, getting all of the infrastructure set up, but then also coordinating the code to make sure that the memory is coming in properly. We do that out of the box for you. That and that would enable you to set to set and be able to retrieve that. We're looking into uh, the it's going to be database backed, so you would have the ability to even store it in a managed service as well. The other thing is the prompts. You have the ability to do prompt templates. We will look into a few in a few minutes, um, as well as use those pipelines as well by leveraging all of these pipelines. So an LLM chat example without the rag, but what you can see here is because we have that state also known as the memory component, we're able to come in and create that loop around for that chat bot experience. The last challenge that ongoing management, having that compliance and regulation, you know, with the Gen AI, with the EU AI Act coming out, um, and having the various various levels of uh, what needs to be reported, what doesn't need to be reported, um, types of criteria for their for their for the model or the use case that you're doing, you have to keep that in mind. Always role-based access control, security, alerting. So with Selden, you have the capabilities of getting all of these these other ancillary and important aspects that keep the model safe in compliance and, um, and valuable to the end user that's using it. So for the Selden module, um, what's inside? The ease of deployments, so the Azure Open AI, the hugging faces, having that ability to quantize with VLLM or deep speed, um, the transformers library as well. So this enables you to do open source or in-house models on-prem, as well as those open AI, um, uh, open AI uh, access as well. A lot of people ask a question I get around, why would you do something like deploy an open AI runtime within Selden? And the answers, are because you have those complex pipelines where you can integrate that open AI. You have the metrics and the monitoring in a standardized way, just as your traditional models. So when I always like to say when deploying an LLM with Selden, it's same, same, but different. You're doing the same exact activities, the same exact workflows. However, you're just applying it with LLMs and putting in a little bit more of a detailed configuration. You get the application building, so the memory component using those complex pipelines with our Selden Core V2, um, which enables you to have and have that chatbot experience and take out the need to build out the whole memory aspect of your use case of your chatbot's use case as well. And like I said, one AI ecosystem having all the logging, the management of all the models. LLM or traditional or a mixture of two for your use case and having that in a managed and structured, uh, having that structured in a way that you are able to manage all of them together as opposed to having to go to seven or eight different places. So you have to go and see all of the performance and aspects of what the models are doing. So from a benefits perspective for Selden, it's performant, low latency with our concept of multi-model serving and the multiple GP and distributed GPUs. You're able to run multiple LLMs should you so need to across that distribution. Um, you also have that ease of flexibility. So with the various backends as opposed to model specifics, you have that flexibility to try out all various types of models. I know for my demo box, which is a little smaller, I was trying out some GPT-NEOs and some tiny llamas and 
being able to switch back and forth very quickly was uh, a very uh, easy experience from a developer experience as well. You also have that custom components, which does allow you to access third-party data, calling out to the vector database, or let's say in a e-commerce use case, you need to bring in the SKUs to put it into the LLM to give an app to get a sense of who the customer was. So having that custom component tree allows you to do all of those things. And finally, it's production ready. You are using uh, a, a technology that has been around for a while um, and having those performance monitoring, the scaling with Kubernetes, having all of the logging and, and requests access really does provide that value when using the module with L, uh, for cell, with cell. We're not gonna do Q and A yet. We're gonna come over into here. And so what I'm showing you today is some of the model settings. Oh, uh, hold on, let me see if I need to reshare my screen. Ah, entire screen there. All right, so another key aspect of when configuring a model an LLM with Selden is we'll open up our, we'll I'll open up my VS code and look into my model settings. So when you have a model, you create a model settings.json file. This is the core configuration file that tells you what type of LLM you're using, what type of model do you need a prompt template. So if we come into my LLM OpenAI configuration, and we go line by line, I'm setting my LLM runtime implementation. Please note this URI with the rag.txt, we'll go into that in um, one second. But then I'm, I come down and I say my provider with OpenAI, that prompt template, so that's where that rag comes in. And then I can actually tap into any of the endpoints that OpenAI on the documentation that they have. This works for Dolly and Beddings as well. Now, if we notice that rag text, I have the ability to come in and create just a plain text file that allows me to input and inject various pieces of information. So this enables, as we, as we saw from that tensor map within the predictive summary, I have the ability to put in and inject each different value that I want. So these could be outputs from previous traditional models going down a pipeline in order to enable you to um, run these types of summarization or having that chatbot keep have the ability for that chatbot and when you're calling that LLM, the ability to give that information. If we come over into that local, the locals look, as you can see, a little bit more involved. But as what I can set is my local runtime. I'm setting my URI, which is just the transform, which is just the hugging face um, URI. Now in a production style environment, what you will do is bring that hugging face model into you behind your firewalls, put it in some sort of the S3 storage bucket, and then you would put this model settings file right next to the weights of that model, the downloaded hugging face model. So I would, I would set that in the URI, um, I would set my version, then in my extras, I would start setting my backend, my profiling, and if I want to use GPUs or CPUs, as well as if we decide to use CPUs, the tensor parallelization of those, C, of those GPUs as well. Now, if we come down into the prompt, what we can see is you have a Jinja template um, this has been, uh, this is common with uh, a lot of the hugging face models. They have these templates that are used for the input format, the proper input format for that model to do its predictions or its generation. So as you can see, it's enabled and I have the URL, URI, which is that file sitting right next, next to it. And I have the end of tokens to see as that end of text. So if I come in to the Jinja, the Jinja template, I can set in, the, in I can set my system template. You are a helpful chatbot that is explaining an MLOps platform named Selden, and then I can and then this is the 
this is the this is the structure that will inject all of the content the answers as well as the question as well as the retrieval of the documentate of the from the documentation as well all right so that about wraps up the examples and finally what we can do is talk to a chatbot. So we can come in and I can say Python chat.py. I have the ability, I'm setting local, local OpenAI or GPU. We'll do the OpenAI one right now. Hello, can you tell me about selling for V2? And it is now thinking. So what's happening under the covers in Kubernetes land is now I'm leveraging these three, these four separate ML server pods um, for the LLM runtime. So the LLM local, the LLM open AI, and then that memory runtime, which is going to enable you to have that chatbot experience. So if we come back over, we can see that it's giving us a response and I can say, what are you, what, whoops. Are we talking about? And as you can see, that memory is working um, exa exactly as it was uh, planned. So now if we come over and we come into the code and we change our, and if I just change into my local, as we can see, those are some pretty good results from OpenAI. So now let's switch it again and we'll come in and we'll use the local this time. And please, um, this is a smaller box, so it takes a little bit, but hi, can you tell me about Selden 4v2? And as it's running now, the local, now as you can see, my local model is running and sending those predictions through. And that about wraps it up. I would be open to opening it to questions, um, anything and anything. Please feel free. And if anyone does um, want to try this out, please uh, please contact us. Um, we have a page on Selden. So within Selden.io, if we come into resources, product, the LLM module, um, having the deploy LLMs, just click on this button and we'd be more than happy to give a demo uh, in detail and talk further about your use cases.